We thank God for your prayers and we are back now. Amen. So let's open the Bible. I want to share with you the scriptures that are going to help you a lot, especially, allow me to say, especially this year. This year is a year of what? I think uh, we need to know why God said that. And we need to understand bearing fruits means what? So we'll be ready. I, I want to read uh, the Bible and I want to preach to you the message that I've preached on the 31st. Maybe you'll understand it better now. Genesis 25 from verse 1 to 6. Mama, let's read that verse. It says, Abraham again took a wife and her name was Keturah and she bore him Zimra, Joshan, Meda, Midian, Ishba, Ishbak, and Shua. Joshan begot Sheba and Dedan and the sons of Dedan were Ashurim, Letushim, and Luamin, and the sons of Midan, Midian, were Epha, Epher, Hanok, Abida, and Elda. All these were the children of Keturah. And Abraham gave all that he had to Isaac. But Abraham gave gifts to the sons of the concubines, which Abraham had. And while he was still living, he sent them eastward away from Isaac, his son, to the country of the east. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Maybe you will remember, you remember the scripture, isn't it? Amen. Uh, how many of you were there on the 31st? You remember this, isn't it? So I'll make us to read scriptures we talk, because I don't want to talk my things here. And then when... I was reading this scripture, I began to search what is the meaning of why God chose Abraham. But remember here, this is the message of bearing fruits, right? Bearing fruits. Bearing fruits. Because this is your year of what? Bearing fruits. Why God? chose Abraham. Now we can hear what he did here. God was preparing for our Lord Jesus Christ to come. And also he was preparing for our generations. For eternal life to live a life of faith. If you remember in Genesis 12 from verse 1 to 3, Bible talks about God speaking with Abraham and say, Abraham, get out from your people. And you go to a land that I will show you. When Abraham moved out, he obeyed. It was counted righteousness. He believed God. When Abraham was told that, uh, take your son to Moria and sacrifice him, he believed God and do that without looking at the fulfillment of what? Of the promise. He believed God. So even here, we can see God still using Abraham to understand that there is Isaac. There's other children, but there is what? There's Isaac. The children of Abraham were in two groups. The first one was children from slave or slavery and the, a child from the promise or the child of a promise the child of promise was a child of faith which Abraham believed God also God said Abraham you'll have your son it's when Abraham was moving he was rich and turning around with all that he had and, 
and God says, I'm your shield. He told, God told Abraham, I'm your shield. Ah. Abraham said, ah, you tell me you are my shield. You are protecting what? Because if I die here, all my inheritance will be taken by this man. So God says, ah, you are going to have a child from your loins. You are go- when God says you are going to have a child, it's a promise. So we had a son of what? Of a promise, which was Isaac. So now, when Abraham was old, he realized that the child, the children from slaves and concubines, because that's what the Bible says, they can take over or fight the inheritance of the heir, which is Isaac. What he did, he called them, he gave them gifts and sent them away. The Bible says he sent them to the east. They went that side. And he's left with what? With Isaac. And the Bible says he gave all to what? To Isaac. What is that he gave Isaac? I want to tell you what he gave Isaac. He gave all the blessings to Isaac. He gave gifts to all, but he gave blessings to what? To Isaac. There's a difference between a blessing and what? And a gift. Because a gift can work somewhere. But a blessing can work everywhere. When you have a blessing, you can go where there is nothing and there will be something. So Abraham was chosen by the righteousness of God, not by the works he has done. The Bible says he was chosen by the righteousness of God. In other words, when he obeyed God, it was counted for him as what? Righteousness. The moment when Abraham stood in righteousness with God, God promised and he blessed him. It came to pass. One of the problems we have today is we are not standing in righteousness but we want blessing. That's the main problem. So here you could see uh, the young man was given a blessing. Everything was through what Abraham had. And he had all these blessings from God. God says, I will bless you. And then whoever curse you will be cursed. Whoever bless you will be blessed. Is when God was speaking with Abraham. And the Bible says he was blessed. But look at this one. This verse that will really shock you. When I was reading in Genesis 26, from verse 12 to 14, can you just read from Genesis 26 from 12 to 14? Now we know that Isaac received as a child of what? Of Abraham. And through the righteousness he has lived, the father lived the life of righteousness. Now is Isaac here. Read. Then Isaac sowed in the land and ripped in the same year a hundredfold and the Lord blessed him the man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous for he had possessions of flocks and possessions of heads and a great number of servants so the Philistines envied him here you can see Isaac now if you can read from verse 1 of Genesis 26 there, you'll hear that there was a famine. By the time of famine, animals died. By the time of famine, remember that Abraham was rich in cattle. So what happened by the time of famine? What makes Isaac to move from where he was, the land of his father, to Gerar, the land of the Philistine? The Bible says when he reached there, he saw in the land. Amen. He saw in the land. What makes him to move? Famine. He might have lost all. Can I tell you this? Though you can receive inheritance which is physical from your father, that doesn't mean that it will last. It will get a challenge. Because out of you, 
there have to be something that you have to give birth of. I don't know if you're hearing me. There have to be fruits that you need to bear, to bear those fruits. What happened when the famine came? Automatically, all the animals might be affected or he left with few because he could not challenge the Philistine. The Philistine looked at him, they rejected him. It's only when he saw in the land. The Bible says, he become rich. What is the meaning of you become rich? It means you were not rich. Remember, his father was rich. His father was rich. So now he became rich. He saw in the land. He took a seed that was coming from his father's side. He saw in the land. And he harvest. He become rich. Later. Later he became very big. To extend that the Philistine envy him. Because the progress of the righteous men affect the wicked. They jealousy you, they compete you, they fight you. Any competition you see is coming from the wrong heart. I don't know if you're hearing me. Look here, the Bible says, he saw in the land, he plant the seed of a righteous man multiply all the time. If you want to see what God will do, start small. Just start something. Why the Bible says, he went there and start to sow. But can you just read that verse 12 again? Listen to that verse. It will really shock you. It says what? Verse 12 there. Then Isaac sowed in the land and reaped. Stop there. Stop there. Isaac sowed in the land and reap. Read that verse again. Mama. Then Isaac sowed in the land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. A hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. Look here. Isaac sowed and reaped a hundredfold. He didn't sow and become rich. The issue here is to start. You know, in the beginning of the day, I was saying, please, can you do small things? Start small thing. Even if it says, don't wait when your job is finished. He saw in the land, he saw a small thing. He, hundred, he reaped a hundredfold. Can you carry on reading there? It says, the man began to prosper. The man, now, listen. After he drew, he, he, he harvested hundredfold. The Bible says, now he began. This, they, they are levels. <clears throat> they are levels. You don't wake up, oh, I'm rich. I mean, how are you going to manage the money? The money will manage you. You don't wake up like that. Yet there are steps. He received hundredfold. After he received hundredfold, the Bible says, he began to be rich. Because the riches it have got levels. I don't know if you're hearing me. So, but it's coming from small thing. This man went to a land of Gera. He began to bear fruits. He began to bear fruits. Okay, mama. He Carry said, on. the man began to prosper mm -hmm. and continued prospering. And until... continue. Can you hear that? And continue. Listen, if you don't start, nobody will start for you. Can you look, point this out? If you don't start, if you don't nobody start, will start for you. Nobody will start for you. Do you know what the Bible says? It was the time of famine. A person is prospering by the time of famine. If you ever find someone, there's famine everywhere, but someone is still having enough. He's having abundance out of small things, out of nothing. After he has left from the place where famine hit, he found himself in Khauti, like yourself. You are here today, you're coming from somewhere, isn't it? So you can start small something, and something can happen. You know, uh, I tried even to speak something like a, a wish, you know, some of you, if you remember, I said it that 
Okay, we have got people that we are paying rent in the church. There are many. As even you people that we are paying rent, the money we are giving you. You can take that small money and start something. Because this is a year that you can bear fruits. Out of nothing. Rest. If you want to see this, uh, read Romans 4. Why I'm speaking about this to you. Romans 4 verse 13 to 16. Romans 4, you'll understand why I'm speaking this. Can you read, Mama? Romans 4, 13 to 16. For the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if those who are of the law are as faith is made void and the promise made of no effect, because the law brings about wrath, for where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of faith, of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Abraham is the father of us all. And for us to hear the message of being a heir was not for Abraham or Isaac. It was for us. The message of us to be here because of the promise, the promise that was given, this promise was for us. The message was not for Abraham. It was not for the people of Israel who believe in a law. But it was for us who stand by faith in righteousness. We stand by faith in righteousness. What is the meaning of standing by faith? Okay, because now we have got the scriptures, we obey the word of God. Like Abraham who did. That it was counted for him as righteous when he obeyed the word of God. Not by the works we have done that we found grace, but by the faith alone. By the faith. Amen. Are you hearing that? Are you hearing this message I'm telling you? Because if you can see, you will understand that, you know, the scriptures is telling us we are the sons of what? Of Abraham. Read again that last verse, Mama. Verse 16. It says what? It says, therefore, uh -huh. it is of faith that it might be according to grace, uh -huh. so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but always to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. The faith you have is not different with the one Abraham had. Abraham will hear the voice and obey it. Your obedience, when you are holding like this, it shows you have faith to God. And the righteousness of God makes you to live according to the scriptures. I don't know if you're hearing that. Automatically it means when you are a child of the promise, you are the heir. Have you become? No, you are waiting. Some of you now, you are questioning yourself, why am I situations like this? You are waiting. What is the meaning of a hair? A person that is expected to take over. You are waiting to take over. A hair takes over after when the father has what? Has died. So Christ died for you. Are you not supposed to take over? You are supposed to live by faith. So, whatever that you are hoping for. Don't lose. Don't lose that hope. Don't lose faith. I don't know if you are hearing me. You can still bear fruits. You are a person that can give birth to something. You are the heir in the kingdom. And you seek the kingdom all shall follow. 
And how do you seek the kingdom? By following the scriptures. Simple as that. The scriptures makes you to stand in the righteousness of God. Where God wanted to stand. Challenges come. You say, hey, I'm the hair in the kingdom. I may not be visible now, but I'm about to. Something is about to happen. If you believe, say amen. amen. You are children of Abraham. Tell them, I'm a child of Abraham. I've got faith like of Abraham. So now, it's no longer Isaac of the blood now. Because the faith Abraham had, you have the same. Abraham faced a lot. He fought. There were a lot of problems. And he went to a place where he was like, he's lost on the road, but God was taking him there. Sometimes when you are moving, like Abraham, it's like you are not knowing where you are going, but God is about to show you the land. He's about to show you where you are going. And if you believe, shout hallelujah. Sometimes we ask ourselves questions. <laughs> As long as I've been a child of God, what's going on with me? If you find this, that the faith you are having, it makes you to stand in righteousness with God, waiting for the promise to be what? Fulfilled. You won't worry about that. The moment when I get this, I say, ah, me, I'll never worry again. I'll never worry again. Because I know that, listen, I have to stand where? I have to bear fruits in the spirit which is the righteousness of God. Which is bearing fruits in the spirit. Righteousness of God. Waiting for the fulfillment so that when I say in the name of Jesus something will happen. I will show you another scripture that talks about what I am saying now. Amen. Amen. Are you hearing what I am trying to say? Amen. Look at this scripture. It will really shock you because I was even asking myself is there anybody hearing what I am trying to say? Yeah. John 15, 15 to 16. I want us, you, we read this scripture slowly. We understand what this scripture is saying. It will really blow, and we know in the scripture. John 15, 15 to 16, it says what? Mama? It says, No longer uh -huh. do I call you servants. Yes. For a servant does not know what his master is doing. My God. But I have called you friends for all things that I heard from my father, uh -huh. I have made known to you. Mm. You did not choose me, but I chose you mm. and appointed you that you should go and bear fruits mm. and that your fruits should remain, that whatever you ask the father in my name, he may give you. Oh my God. I've read that scripture several times until I found that there are three things in that scripture. The first one, God said, I'm the revealer. I want to communicate with you as a friend. I want to reveal some things to you. The first thing there, I mean, you're no longer a slave. A slave does not know my plans. A plans about you and a plans about others and a plans that I want to do. That's the first thing that you can read there. The second one, know that I have chosen you. The reason why I chose you is to bear fruits. I have chosen you to bear fruits. So now, the fruits have to be there. So if the fruits, of, if the fruits are existing, the third thing, you'll be able to pray and get answers. You don't get answers if you don't have fruits, can you tell your neighbor? You don't get answers of prayer if you don't have fruits. You find someone is asking for a car, but you don't have fruit. That car now you are taking it to a wrong place. It doesn't even glorify God. It adds to wickedness. Can you read that verse again, Mama? That verse, especially. If you read, uh, let me just say, 16, yes. You did not choose me. You did not choose me. But I chose you. I chose you. 
and appointed you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruits if you go and bear fruits and that your fruits should remain your fruits must remain that whatever you ask the father if your fruits remain is then whatever you ask your father in my name in my name he may give you he may give you so this is a challenge we have today that we are just asking things asking things but you know god is looking at the fruits we are not bearing fruits if we are in a year of bearing fruits your prayer must be answered i don't know if you are hearing me tell us that my prayer must be answered this year can you see now you are crying for the fruit of a car is it a fruit you are crying for the fruit of what which you can lose it any time the fruits must start inside you if you read galatians 5 verse 22 galatians 5 verse 22 He start with the fruits of the spirit is love. When you are busy with love, kindness. Can you just read my mother? Galatians 5. But the fruits of the spirit is yeah. love, yeah. joy, mm-hmm. peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control against such there is no law my god are you hearing that verse there? the fruits must be in the spirit first it makes you to obey god easy when you have love you obey god easy but if you don't have love you fight people and you do whatever you do whatever you do it on your own you i mean you 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 use your power to you know you don't allow god to take control if truly you want to see god at work these are the fruits that you need this year you know and when you have those fruits when you say god give me this he will give you whatever he will give you i don't know if you're hearing that You know Jesus went to church in the synagogue in Mark 11 just read Mark 11 12 to 17 The Bible says Jesus by the time when he went to Jerusalem that day it was another day the reason why Jesus take a sambok and shaya shaya when Jesus reached there before that he was on a cult and then and the bible says they were praising there comes messiah hosanna they were shouting people who knows i thought say ah oh, it's a prophet and then the moment when he entered the bible says he went to the temple when he reached there he found people with doves others exchangers of money and he took a shambok uh-huh. uh-huh. <laughs> it's like i'm seeing people running away <laughs> ready you know and the bible says he went out and found a fig tree there was a day when he, on that time he found a fig tree with leaves and he judged it same applies to what he was doing in the temple he reach the temple and look and check and find this no fruit but only activities in our churches nowadays there's too much activities without a fruit if jesus can come here you bring judgment i don't know if you hear me judgment will come because of the activities without bearing fruits he said it is written that this church the church will be called what the house of what of prayer what do we pray without results there was no fruit there was using doves doves by that time were for purification of women 
but there was no purity. Everybody was living his own life. They are busy killing doves, but they are not changing. This is the time that we bring purity. This is the time that we bear fruits that are worthy. So that even our prayer makes sense. I don't know if you're hearing me. The Bible says, a prayer of faith, it availeth much. It works. How can you say you are praying this prayer when you are not living right? I'm sure that's what I'm trying to say. Because what you have to do here, you must bear fruits here. Bear fruits here. You can read John 15 verse 2. It will surprise you. Just read John 15 verse 2. Just read John 15 verse 2. Right. It says what? Every branch in me uh -huh. that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruits. Here it's a sign that when you're a child of God, when you start to bear fruits, you invite Jesus. You are so close to Jesus. Christians, let's stop judging Christians by materials. Because there are some people who are very close to God and they don't have what you have. So close to God. There are some people that if you can curse them, you curse yourself. And you don't know that, that they are close to God. Because always the fruits that they are bearing is there to prune them more. But when you are failing to bear fruits, you are separated with him. Even your prayer is abomination before God. I don't know if you're hearing me. So now, we can make our Lord to be around all the time, but the fruits, you know the Bible says we will know you by the fruits? Eh? It means even when you are carrying on, if it is something that you are just doing, 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 to show the people, very soon you'll be exposed. So here, the fruits here, they invite our Lord Jesus to be close to us. I'm praying that this year, the real Christians will be visible in the name of Jesus. People have to know that you are pruned. According to the scripture, it's every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away and every branch that continues to bear fruit, he prunes so that it will continue to bear fruit, even richer and finer fruit. This, I will tell you something, but it must not offend you. There are some prayers. Even if you pray them, God will never answer you. Because you don't have fruits that suit what you are praying for. Sometimes you don't need to go and say, God, why are you not answering me? Check your fruits. I don't know if you hear me. Because those fruits attract answers prayer. It attracts results. This year you must bear fruits. You must look, you know, people must know you are a Christian, you are blessed. Amen. I don't know if you hear me. Always you are being checked. Look when Jesus says, he went to the figs, to the leaves. He found leaves to the fig. He found leaves. He didn't find the fruits. When he comes here, you find that you are a Christian, you've got the Bible, but there's nothing. The actions you are doing, the life you are living. You find that the leaves are like, someone say, hey, this Christian. When you lift up your hands, you say, oh, God. You know, you are worshiping. Hey, Jesus. Hey, God. Sometimes you speak in tongues without fruits. And later, the same mouth, when you are offended, you are insultive. The same mouth, no one can control you. How many times you are being reprimanded and you don't listen? I mean, you can look at yourself, you find that you, there are some people you don't want to listen because when you look at them now, you are in a level where no one can control you. But when you're a child of God here, you'll understand that, oh God, God is watching me and I don't have anything. Without Jesus, I can do nothing. That's what the Bible says. Jesus said, without me, 
you can do nothing. Think about when you say, when you are failing to bear fruits, I cut you off. And if you are off, you will dry up, you will take it to the fire. You can't do nothing. But when you are with him, you know, oh, this is because of God. I don't know if you're hearing me. So this year, I want to tell you this. If you can bear much fruits, you'll be a blessing. I say you're going to be a blessing to your family. You're going to be a blessing to your friends, to your neighbors in the name of Jesus. I believe when you kneel down to pray, God will answer you. He will really answer you because he knows your heart. He knows that here inside you there is nobody. So you have been challenged to bear what? To check even your fruits. If you want to know your partner, if you want to know, know you know yourself, ask your partner. He will tell you that or she will tell you this COVID-19, I saw you, you were like this. Sometimes you just say, but why money is not there? Yeah, I don't know where I can get money. And there's no job, there's no food, and you have to manage. This was a good test to you. I don't know if you're hearing me. And this time, believe God that God is going to honor you in the name of Jesus. How many of you believe that this year, you'll bear fruits. You believe that? When you believe that, you are saying, God will answer my prayer. I say, God is going to answer your prayer. I say, God is going to answer your prayer. If you want to see, you need to ask God, like in Ephesians, let's read Ephesians. We read Ephesians 5. Maybe you can read from verse 1 to 15. Just write one. To you read at home and finish. And I want to close. Uh, ask your neighbor. From one. Ask your neighbor. And say, uh, Are you sure you, you don't have an evil fruit? Look at your neighbor. Ask him, Are you really bearing the right fruits? Say, answer me. Answer me. Can we just read uh, Ephesians 5? Uh, maybe we can read from verse 1 we close. It says, therefore, therefore, be imitators of God. Be imitators of God. As dear children. Stop there. If the Bible says, be imitators of God, it means follow him here from the scriptures before you pray. Follow him from where? From the scriptures. Do what he say. Okay, carry on, Mama. And walk in love. Oh, as is the Christ fruit. Also. Is the fruit now. Walk in love. Sometimes you can overcome a stubborn person by loving him. You can overcome. A person doesn't even listen to you. Do this, he knows that you are going to ask, Where are you coming from? Why are you traveling? You, you move in the night. Don't even ask those kind of questions. Uh, Papa, this is food here. Yeah. Can I do this? What must I do for you? What must I do for you? Don't try to buy love. The person says, Hey, you are stupid. You are stupid. He says, I understand, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless you. You, you can cool up everything. Person, you are stupid. Liwe, Nama. Liwe, no stupid. You are dumb cop and you don't know this person is having a gun. And now you are insultive like him. Answering a fool is very dangerous. So love to you can make you to silence the evil spirit. I don't know if you're hearing me. Bring out that fruit. I don't know if you're hearing that. Carry on, Mama, ready. And walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. Carry on already. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking, 
no cause jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving, a, giving of thanks. For this you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, no covetous man, who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord, and they have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever made manifest is light. Therefore, he says, Awake, you who sleep, mm -hmm. arise from the dead, Christopher. and Christ will give you light. You know, I want to summarize what you have read by saying, Run away. Run away. Amen. Because you have got friends, you have got wrong people around you, run away from them if they are living a wrong life. Because many of false characters, they are coming from wrong people. If you associate with wrong people and God is showing you that these people are wrong, automatically you end up doing what they are doing. You end up having greedy, adulator, fornicators. They are around. Such people, there are many, they are not even with for the kingdom. Even when you are in the church, uh, you don't need to believe everyone. Even believing us also, you don't need to believe until you, we are proven. Even the Bible says, even the elder must be proven. I'm sure you hear what I'm saying. What I'm saying. So you need to make sure that you know what you are doing. You can rather expose and say, this is not part of me than just to take everything and say it is yours. Check in the church when you come. You are not coming for anybody, you are coming for yourself. Amen. You find friends in the church. Amen. It's not true. Amen. Do you know that when you pray, if you want to see how far is your spirit, just take the Bible you read and pray and check how far are you. You find this Bible is heavy to you. The, because there are things you are getting from people. There are times when you take the Bible, when you open it, you slumber. You find that you're doing like this. You're doing like, you say, hey, what's going on with me? Because there's, there are things that are killing the fruit of the Spirit in you. I don't know if you're hearing me. The light of God in you must expose what is not right. Amen. As a child of God, you check your association. When you are together with people, what do you talk? Cause jesting. Cause jesting. There are things that you're not supposed to talk. How can I talk about ladies if I'm a man? I'm with this man. We are talking about ladies. We are putting something in ourselves. Later we'll have a spirit of lust. I'm sure you understand what I'm trying to say. Amen. So there are things that the Bible says we must rather give thanks to God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Because, look here. If you waste your ways in prayer, you won't have ways of anything. Amen. But if you don't pray, your ways will be wasted. You are just talking, 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 and at the end of the day, even when you pray, you're not focused. This is the time that you have to bear fruits. Amen. Amen. How many of you want to bear fruits this year? Amen. You must also check people around you. Run away. Run away. You check your friends. It might be your friend who's having evil spirit that devil is using. 
And now when you pray, you find you cannot reach them. Or you can change your friend. I don't know if you hear me. Or a friend changes you. Because automatically, you have to socialize, isn't it? In the church, there's fellowship. But now, if your fellowship is affecting your spirit, how are you going to give birth to the fruits? How are you going to bear the fruits when you pray now? Where is the results? Nobody can take away from you anything from you. Right now, when you are following God like this, people say, where is your God? No, we can't see your God. You can't see your blessing. We can't see this. Remember, listen, this year, you people will bear fruits. To extend that, even your family will be surprised. Amen. I'm telling you, you are going to see something this year. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. From today, remove what people told you. Remove the fear of failure. Remove whatever you look at your fruits. You bear right fruits. You bear what? Right fruits. Remove people. Don't talk about anybody. That one is evil. That one is what one. That one, remove people. And enjoy yourself with peace with God. You won't lack anything. You will have a testimony this year. And God will fight for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to congratulate you. God bless you. Amen.